Yep. Hi all, my name is Stream Saver Sasha, and I'm here with a video to tell you about how impervious surface in your own front yard could be damaging the health of your local streams. It has to do with this thing called runoff. Perhaps you've heard of it before, and I'm sure you have. It is quite literally water that runs off of things and into a stream. But more specifically, runoff refers to water that doesn't infiltrate into the soil and into the ground, and it goes directly into the stream. It doesn't take any scenic routes. <clears throat> impervious surface changes the way runoff makes its way to streams. And impervious surface can look like a variety of things. It could be this. It could be this. It could look like this, and it could even look like this. This is a stadium. <clears throat> so, um, it's basically impervious surface is any kind of surface that uh, prohibits water from getting into the ground and infiltrating down. And it keeps water, new precipitation, from meeting up with the groundwater. <clears throat> So, you might be asking yourself, Stream Saver Sasha, what's the problem with more runoff? More water in streams sounds good, right? <clears throat> well, the first problem is what's in that runoff. Runoff in urban environments can pick up and carry trash and gross chemicals from our streets and sidewalks into streams and rivers. <clears throat> Sometimes, this water isn't treated at all. It's really gross. This can cause bad water quality that can injure the stream's inhabitants, and debris like bottles and bags can even trap or otherwise harm animals in the stream. And in some cases, scientists have even found that certain chemicals, particularly hormones that we improperly dispose of, can cause he fish to become she fish. Extra nutri nutrients that are carried into the stream in runoff can also harm the wildlife. Extra nutrients like phosphorus can cause, harm can cause harmful algal blooms that can deplete the oxygen in the water and cause fish and other animals, or other animals in the water to suffocate. <clears throat> runoff from impervious surface can also pick up extra sediment as it travels into the stream. And extra sediment can really impair the growth of many species and can also in fish impair their gills and cause suffocation. In addition to the icky things often found in runoff, an increase in water is not always good. Impervious surface typically not only increases how much, how much water we get, but also how fast we get that water. Naturally, precipitation has to fight through soil and rock, and it gets there really slowly sometimes. But, with impervious surface, it's like a raindrop can take the express metro. Voila, it's at the stream. <clears throat> when too much water gets to a stream too fast, we get flooding. Not good. Flooding is not only bad for us, our homes, and our pets, but unnatural flooding is also bad for the animals that live in the stream. Fish that congregate and woody debris lose their habitat as it gets washed away downstream. These fish are losing their habitat. Crayfish living under rocks, if they're not also washed away, might lose their rock homes as well. Lucky for us, more intelligent stream savers than I have developed ways that we can keep the harmful effects of runoff at a minimum. One of those techniques is obviously reducing the amount of impervious surface in the watershed. So we can do things like create narrow roads and use less sidewalk, and that will reduce the amount of area covered by impervious surface. Another option growing in popularity is to use porous surfaces so that water can still filter through those things. Um, bioengineers have actually created porous pavements and driveways that we can use to replace our current impervious ones. Planting vegetation throughout a watershed can also help with run the effects of runoff. Vegetation helps slow the transport of water to the stream and it can help filter out some of those harmful excess nutrients and sediment and other bad chemicals that might be concentrated in the runoff. Storm retention ponds and wastewater treatment facilities can also help with this. Some businesses have also taken to building green roofs 
So this offsets some of the impervious surface of the building, but it also increases the amount of time that water takes to get to the stream. All of these techniques seem to require large-scale effort, but fear not, for there are smaller things that you can do to help out. One of those things is one of those things is that you can wash your car on your lawn instead of your driveway. And that way the water can filter through the ground and the soil and still meet up with groundwater. Or better yet, you can wash your car at a car wash that recycles its water. Another way you can help out is you can properly dispose of your pet's waste. That way, no icky bacteria makes its way into the runoff and into your water. You can use rain barrels to collect water during rain event, uh, during rainstorms, and then you can use that water to water your lawn or garden and decrease the amount of runoff. You can fertilize your lawn less often and remove some of the harmful nutrients and chemicals that usually enter our streams. And one of my personal favorites is the rubber sidewalk. These are made with California recycled California tire rubber that is high density, non-mushy, and tough enough to handle skateboards and women's high heels. It's definitely got my vote. <clears throat> there are lots of ways that you can help out. But to show you that your efforts are not in vain, I will give you an example of a creek or stream that has benefited from these techniques. This is a real life example. <clears throat> so, this is Woods Creek, albeit a little bit pixely. This is Woods Creek, and river. the creek is flowing this way. On this side of the bridge is my apartment. On this side of the bridge is higher education. I must cross this bridge to get to class. So, on a nice, clear day, this is a pretty scenic route to class. Easy for me to walk quick, quickly and I can get there, drive, not, not a big deal. <clears throat> on a rainy day, this is what the bridge looks like. It's just water. You can't, you can't see the bridge. So, I basically need waders and a boat to get to class if I plan on trekking this way. Lucky for me, some stream savers, <clears throat> also known as restoration practitioners, saw this problem and sought to find a resolution on how to fix Woods Creek. <clears throat> so, they, over the past few years, this creek has undergone several different restoration projects. They have input rain gardens and rain barrels, they've revegetated some areas, and that there has even been wetland construction of sorts. Unfortunately for me, a lot of this restoration took place after I trudged through the stream and graduated. But fortunately for the students now there, they can safely cross when it floods. Granted, they weren't able to remove all the impervious surface in the watershed, so there is still flooding. But it occurs on a much lower magnitude, and so when it floods, it looks more like this. You could clearly still walk across there, so that's good. And I'm sure the professors appreciate having dry students in class. <clears throat> and that pretty much concludes my video on impervious surface and runoff. If you have any questions, please comment on my video and I'll let you know if I know. Thanks for watching.